Aria Bells, hi. Hello. <laughs> so grateful that you are in this space. For anybody who does not know you, who are you today? Hey, everybody. So uh, my name is Aria. I am a freelance theater director, dramaturg, designer in the DC area, and a freelance grant writer that has had a um, little under 10 years of grant writing experience. Which is exactly why you're in this space. I'm so excited mm -hmm. to dive into that. I'm curious how you got into that work. Yeah, so, so how I got into grant writing is a kind of a weird lateral path that I'm very grateful for. Uh, but my training is in directing. Um, but and I got a, a fellowship at a theater that was like a literary fellowship. But afterwards, I was like, whoops, I, I need a job at some mm -hmm. point. And not a lot of theater jobs to go around. But uh, I was applying to a bunch of different places. And I applied to a grant writing firm. And I came to them being like, hey, I don't really have grant writing experience, but I know theater yeah. and I really love theater. And they were like, you are in luck because we just got a bunch of theater clients. So how about you just work on those theaters? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was a way for me to really learn grant writing on the job while also getting to know the theater industry in DC mainly in other places, but mainly DC. And so since then, I have worked at this firm, I've worked at a couple of different theater organizations as the institutional manager, giving manager and grant writer. And um, I've also been a part of several grants panels for different government organizations and foundations. So uh, it, it's really, it's really like learning on the job and then being able to apply it to work in different institutions. Yeah, it's I feel like a nebulous land a little bit, which is why uh -huh. I'm I'm so grateful that you're in this space because I feel like it's not something that people talk about when we are for sure in, you know, university spaces, undergrad spaces. I think it tends to come up later when people are like, oh, I've created my own work or, oh, I've started a theater company or, oh, I'm in now some level that is a little bit higher up that I need funding. I need access to resources. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, now I need to be reaching out to all these different places. I need to know how to craft this mm -hmm. writing situation that they are specifically asking for. I need to know where to look. I need to know how to like mine all of the things. And it's not something that we're even, I, I know for myself, I'll speak on behalf of myself. Like I know this wasn't even something that was on my radar. And now that I'm, right. I have all these various artistic hats, it's become this thing that's like, oh, you need to, this is a skill you need to know, <laughs> you know? Yes, it, it, it is one of those skills and one of those fields, certainly in the nonprofit sphere where uh, p like nobody necessarily intentionally trains Correct. to to write grants or to be a grant writer. It's it's something like the the, you know, the development landscape and certainly grant writing. A lot of people just kind of fall into mm -hmm. it. Um, and so there's not like a necessarily like a strong training pipeline. Uh, especially for organizations that have and people that have reached a point where they're like, all right, now it's time for institutional funding. Mm -hmm. And it kind of is like a different language that you have to learn and adapt. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what a grant is versus me like, you know, reaching out and doing my own like fundraiser on a, you know, platform or something where I'm asking individuals. Obviously, I would imagine there is some overlap in maybe perhaps the way you share the project and perhaps the ask as well. But let's differentiate between what a grant actually is. Yeah. So um, a, a grant, in, in its simplest terms, a grant is just a, a, a sum of money you apply for that is being given by usually an institution or a group of people. Uh, and uh, it comes with very specific rules because the organizing bodies that distribute grants usually have to follow very specific rules and procedures. And so uh, that's why most grants, there is going to be like a very strict application process mm -hmm. um, that goes along with it. And so the difference between like a grant versus an individual donation, even versus sometimes like a corporate sponsorship mm -hmm. is that there's uh, grants usually come with some government oversight um, over what institutions are able to give. They can come from government bodies, they can come from private foundations, and they can come from like corporate 
entities, but like a corporate grant and like a corporate sponsorship are two very different things. Those are very different processes. And so the grant process will usually come with very specific parameters uh, that you have to apply for and are then usually adjudicated by a board of trustees or directors and sometimes like a third party group. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the sponsorship part of it, too, so that we can really just differentiate. Right. So if we're talking about grants in that way, what would say fiscal sponsorship be that would make it a little bit different or how it would operate a little differently? So a sponsorship, a sponsorship really, it depends on the business, it depends on the corporation, but a sponsorship is usually just something that is handled uh, by like a specific, more like a a business marketing, uh, sometimes corporate social responsibility, but sponsorships generally go for specific events or maybe specific programs, while often like a grant uh, might also go to a mentor program, but but largely uh, sponsorships are are very limited, often one time, and uh, don't necessarily have like a potential year after year giving uh, aspect that a lot of grants do. Got it. Let's come up with an example that okay. we could make really tangible for um, the listener around, cool, I have this thing and this is what I would do in terms of my searching Mm -hmm. for the grants, in terms of my creating of the grants, in terms of the things that I could potentially put into the grant. Like, let's like build uh, an example. Okay, so very typical example, specifically for theaters. You are putting on like a new musical. You are super excited about this musical uh, and you really want institutional support for this. Uh, It's a musical that maybe nobody has ever done before. And so you're looking for something specific for that so when you are considering the project you're writing a grant for you have to then look for granting organizations that will specifically give to like a new musical Mm -hmm. because there are granting organizations that do not do that Mm -hmm. grant like you can't go to uh every organization for every single project Mm -hmm. so if you're doing like a new musical I'm like, okay, so I need to find a granting organization that specifically gives to me musicals. Then you go find those uh, organizations. You look into their parameters. Then you have to see like, okay, now I want to do this musical at this date. Is this organization going to distribute money Mm -hmm. in time for me so that I can use that money towards doing this musical and this date? And if all of that checks out, then you have to continue like, all right, now what are the parameters are for applying this grant? Do I need to be a 501c3 organization? Do I need to be in a specific amount of years in business? Do I need a certain number of staff? Are there specific parameters over like where or when? this musical needs to happen. Uh, And a lot of grants is basically like going to an institution and granting organization and just being like, does what I want to do fit into the rules Mm -hmm. of what they are going to give for that specifically for, for a project. Uh, There are certainly grants uh, and a lot of the grants that people know about are just for institutions in general. So if you are like a theater company, that's like, I want money okay we want money because we want to like uh we just want general operating support we want fifty thousand dollars to just go to whatever we want to do that's a little different because then you're going to an institution that gives gives to organizations and that is like a big crux of theater grant writing is general institutional funding general operating and project-based funding because most companies want that general operating fund because project-based funding overall is like kind of annoying to continually uh go for and apply for yeah is there i feel like this is like the question is there a place that is like the listing you know, like it's like a playbill for grants, as in yeah. where do people begin to find them? And besides, yeah. you know, Google being your friend and you typing in grants of for course. new musicals or whatever it is, like where do people yes. even go to know where grants exist? The unfortunate thing is that the most comprehensive stuff are things you have to pay for. And and often they're going to be a little expensive because these directories are designed for organizations to really search for so like foundation directory is going to be your biggest help probably there is like and i don't i don't know what the fee is off the top of my head i think there's like a yearly fee you have to pay but 
that's like a great resource because then you're able to really search like my company is in this region. We do this kind of work. We have this kind of budget and we're looking to fund this kind of project. What are the foundations that will fund that? And foundation directory. You can like filter that that into the foundation directory. You can, yes, you can filter that through foundation directory. That is like the best one that I found. You can also search through like GuideStar and other, and other places. However, let's say like you don't have that. You don't have the money to like pay, I don't know, maybe like $300 a year Mm -hmm. for foundation directory or something. You can Google different, uh, foundations uh, just like where you are and the thing is that like all of these foundations um they they are legally required to have like their 990s available online for you to see so so even if you are well actually i don't know like you you should be able to find like 990s and other uh tax information what is a 990 for anybody who does not know uh so a 990 is like a tax it's a tax form that uh, shows what an organization has spent money Mm -hmm. on. Um, So it'll show you how much money they spend on personnel and for like a granting institution in particular, it'll show you like how much they spend on their, their personnel and their resources. And it will also show you like what organizations they have given money Mm -hmm. to as well. Um, And that will help, uh, give you an idea of like the kind of stuff that they are funding. Mm-hmm. Um, I have found that quite helpful in the past. Yeah, it feels like reverse engineering, um, which is like cool. Yes. I found you. You seem to be an organization that probably p- perhaps could give me and whatever I'm working on some funding. But if I see that all of the things that you have funded are not in alignment with what it is that I do in no way, shape, or form, then it's like maybe I will think about how much time I want to invest and resources I want to right. invest into writing a grant for this particular foundation or organization. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so even if you, if you don't have the resources to find specifically like where these organizations are, if you have like a sense of like the big ones that you're going for, that can help lead you to information that will, that will be very helpful. And, and I mean, a lot of, and sometimes like, you might have like ethical qualms with some of these foundations. Some of these are like really big private foundation that may get money from ways that are like not comfortable with Mm -hmm. you. And it is worth like really investigating whether or not if a foundation is interested in you, whether you think it's like ethically worth Mm -hmm. finding worth taking money from them. And that's where like a 990 can also be helpful because, you know, you can also find out more about where their money is coming from. Yeah, and where it's going and who they've decided to invest in and how those people are operating and if that's in a value alignment with you. Um, So let's say I've, you know, organized my list. Now I have a couple different organizations that I know do these kinds of grants that would work with the project that I am doing. Where do I begin with my writing? I think this is where it gets interesting for me, right? Obviously, they're all going to have a different set of questions. Perhaps there's like a bit of overlap in the in kind of what they're asking for. I would imagine it's like, what is your project? And like, what are you intending yeah. to do? And like all those things, but maybe the way in which they're asking it is a little bit different. How does this yes. system work differently than just like you writing a personal essay or like a an emotional response? Yes. So absolutely. A lot of the times, a lot of these granting organizations, unless they're very specifically looking for something, they're often going to ask very similar questions. They're going to ask like, describe your organization or like describe the history of your organization, describe your project, describe your programming. Um, Tell us about your greatest, you know, your, your greatest setbacks and achievements in the past three to five years, something like that. And so if you are at a point as an organization where you feel ready uh, or, or a group where you feel ready to ask for grant money, the first thing you should do is just start building template language that you can easily copy and paste because a lot of these grants are going to be asking the same things. And it and certainly like when I've worked at different institutions, a big, a very big easy thing to do is just have like an overarching document of like, this is the history of our organization in 100 words, 250 words, 500 words, here is a list of our programs in 100 words, 250 words, 500 words, stuff like that. Here is our equity, diversity, inclusion statement mm-hmm. in however many words. Uh, if you are able to like establish this 
uh, information and, and just like as a template that you can easily switch and change, then the the more um, that then like the more minutia, the more specific questions, those are going to be a lot easier for you to put together because you have already crafted and honed in on language uh, that you can put in without having to think about it too yeah. hard. So, so having draft language is important. Having said that, it is extremely important in whatever grant you do. And this is going to sound silly, but as a, someone who's like been on a grants panel, like it is important. You have to read the grant and you have to read the questions that they're asking because often a lot of organizations might kind of rely on the great story, the background story that they have for their organization um, and not necessarily like really listen to what the questions are asking. Cause these questions are always asking for very specific things. If they have a question that's like, please tell us about, you know, your equity, diversity, inclusion work that you've done in the past three years. Mm -hmm. And then like, you just talk about how great your education program mm -hmm. is and how many schools you've gone to. That's not really answering the question at all. Maybe talking about your programming that addresses those issues is nice, but uh, these organizations are trying to like learn very specific things about you and have to be very specific about reading them and answering yeah. them. So when you have these draft languages, do you recommend yeah. starting with the larger ones then continuing to pare down? Do you recommend starting with the smaller ones and then expanding with the detail? Like what is your go-to in terms of process? Yeah. I definitely, if I'm drafting template language, let's say I'm working for a theater company and I'm trying to, I'm trying to write grants for like season support. Mm -hmm. So then I have to draft um, an outline of the season with like what the plays are about, who's working on it, um, things like that. I will, I'm definitely going to start big first. So I'm going to be like, all right, I'm going to start with my 1000 word answer to this. Maybe not might be a thousand words is actually too much. A thousand character answer, okay. maybe. So I'm going to start with my 1000 character answer and then I'm going to pare it down to 500 characters um, because this is an, an annoying thing about grants is that there's very few times where it's standardized. Every institution is going to ask for different things. And so when I say like, you need to have like a 100 word and like a 250 character or like a three paragraph thing, you, you have to be prepared for just different technical parameters. Yeah. Cause often that is the sticking point. Um, it is. I know. And that's like kind of like what I'm asking, which is like, you have like so many different versions of the thing. Yes, exactly. So you should, you should start with the longer answers and then be prepared to have like at least two shorter versions of them. And this is just like your organizational history, maybe like your current staff, EDI, because EDI is like a very big thing, justifiably a very big thing in grants right now. And then like all anything about programs that you have slash whatever your overarching project is. And what you're hoping to use the money for. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Would that be part of that last paragraph of like the programming? Or is it just you giving a gist of your history, giving a gist of the EDI work that you do, the gist yeah. of the, the programming, then that is enough of the information for them to know why you need it? Often, because then if you have just like those, if you have like those major things, you could come across a grant that's just like, tell us about your organization. That gives mm -hmm. you so little and so if you just have these very specific pieces you can easily combine them together mm -hmm. so it's it's much easier and safer to really prepare language on every single program and every single aspect of your organization that you then can combine mm -hmm. uh because uh because you never really know what it's going to ask and that's just the narrative part that's not even getting yeah. into like financial documents which is going to be also key yeah before we get into the financial document part of it are there any helpful language tools to know? Is there any helpful like sentence structural stuff that's important to think about when one is getting all of this information compiled into draft form? There are a lot of schools of thought because there are certain grant writers who are like, you should write grants very formally, very mm -hmm. much like at, at XYZ Theater Company, XYZ Theater Company does this, that, and the other thing. Artistic director, this person has done this, this, or that. There are also great writers who say, like, you should be more 
personable, casual. Mm -hmm. We are XYZ theater company and we do this, that, and the other thing. And our artistic director, this person does this. And, and really in, in my, in my opinion, in my experience, uh, that could be very up to the institution that you write okay. for. Certainly if it's like a private foundation, maybe like a family foundation, there can, might be a little more flexibility of being personable. But if you're writing for like the National Endowment for the Arts, then, you know, being a lot more regimented, clear, precise in, in your language is very helpful. This is so the so the real answer to the question is just like know who you're know your audience. For. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Know your know your audience, like do a little bit of research, even if like, OK, this is the grant I'm going to write for. Just do a little bit of research into the organization and just get a sense of like how formal they are how um what the other organization or projects that they funded because even if your template language is great it is always helpful to like tailor it to every different foundation mm -hmm. just a little bit yeah now let's go into the financial agreement part of it then yes. where do we begin what do i need to know what am i pulling yeah. what am i having in my little like you know draft folder that is just something that i'm always going to need what are some of the things that right. would be probably most likely helpful Right. So, so this is where it really gets to like, it depends on how big your organization is. And it is, it, it kind of assumes that you are an organization that you are like a 501c3 organization because different grants will have different parameters um, for that. Um, but we are, uh, it's and, also and, possible that it's like me and, uh, you know, a, a show that I've like a screenplay that I've done and I'm trying to get absolutely. commissioned for a thing. Right. So it can, absolutely. and I'm clearly not a 501c3. A hundred percent, hundred percent. So Yes, the parameters for like organization versus just like you individually are going to be very different. The the most obvious thing, no matter what, is that you just need a budget for whatever project that you're that you're doing. Um, you need like, uh, you need like a very strong budget with like very clear idea of where money is coming from, and whether or not it includes the grant that you have. It is it is far better to be confident than to be to be confident and be open for things to change than to be a little nervous and then be really stuck that like, we need this grant money or else like, we're not doing, we're not doing this. It's kind of like an annoying thing with organizations, but like, it's so weird at how like a lot of granting organizations, they want to feel like their money is really important yeah. and that their money is needed. But if you are relying too much on their money, that's a little bit too much that's a little bit too much pressure, pressure. that also yeah. shows that you do not have a plan. You have mm -hmm. to establish that you have to, a plan and the financial documents are a really big part of that, but, and also the narrative, but, um, so you have to be willing, if you're going for a granting organization, you have to be making sure that like your, your project is not solely relying on like one grant. You have to be ready to apply for a whole bunch of grants, a whole lot of individual donors, uh, because no matter how much this one grant could change your life, you have to be prepared for a no. And so your finances always have to be written as if you are preparing for a no. Well, then what would make them want to give to you if it seems like you financially don't necessarily need them? Yeah, this is this is the tricky. This is I don't, That's let, me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. This this is the tr this is the crux with all grant writers of just like yeah. well, how do well like why do we even apply then? right exactly like, if I have all my stuff together and all my docs are in a row and clearly I'm so financially well off then like well, why am I even bothering I know that that's a tricky the, the totally a tricky thing about it that's part of why the financial documents and the narrative have to really go hand in hand together mm -hmm. here you have to establish through the financial documents that you have a plan ready to go uh, and that this money is worthwhile and totally needed and that you as a group of people who's putting on this project that you will persevere and be able to put on this project. How do um, you do that though? Like how do you say both? Cause it feels totally not, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't work together. <laughs> totally. Yes. This look, this is like the crux. This is the crux of grant writing in so many yeah. ways of like you, trying to constantly prove that money is needed can you give an example of when it's worked for you? Or like, I mean, obviously you don't yeah. have to like name the organization or the project, but like to like show it an example, but also show that like then they really didn't need the money, but they also pretended that they didn't, but they like that. 
Yeah, so I um, I worked for an organization in which we were applying for money for multiple shows, and we were applying for this foundation to completely underwrite multiple shows. Okay. If we didn't get this money, then like we weren't really going to be sure how we were going to produce it. But um, but we still had to try to prove that like we would still find a way to do it even if we didn't get this money, but we budget, we budgeted it going full out. Like we are going to ask for as much like the maximum amount that we can and just truly have our ducks in a row with like, we have this, we have these shows ready to go with this programming, a part of it with these dates, these places, all of the information ready to go. And, um, it it was integral to our organization that this show happens. It's integral to like our mission and our goals that these shows happen. Um, and that's a big part of it is that foundation and institutions want to know that the things that you're doing are integral to your mission. Everything yeah. that you do has to be tied to like your mission, whether it's as an organization or as like artists. Okay. Um, so were you we, writing in this thing being like, cool, so this is what we're doing. These are the shows. We need them underwritten. Yeah. And they're going to happen with or without you? Is that the language? Like, I mean, clearly not more eloquently, but is it? Yeah. We can't, it doesn't have to necessarily say with or without, with or without you, but it, it's more that like you have to be prepared for setbacks. So you have to go, you have to go for these grants as if like these grants are going to change your life but you just have to be prepared that they're gonna say no like definitely go full out like we need this money this money is totally great and we are going to make this happen but we are going to make this happen um, because we care about it not because we have the money to do it so it's really kind of like the chase it's like showing these organizations that like you will miss out because we're gonna figure it out though you should probably be along for the ride so that you can yeah. also claim that you helped make this yeah. happen because if we're going to make this happen re- without you, if we need Yeah, to. it's it's a lot of just being like, this work is important. This work is important. It's important for you to be a part of it because mm-hmm. you believe in this kind of work. And conveniently, we are doing the exact work that you believe in. So if okay. you believe in this work, you would believe in us. Yeah. Well, what I'm hearing in that is it's like, yes, you're taking your draft work about like, you know, the organization and who we are and the history and the EDI work and what we're the programming, but we're reflecting it back as to the values that we all are going to be sharing and how that ultimately is the thing that Mm -hmm. would make somebody want to invest. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So the financial part of it is just really organizing your budget. Is there anything else that would be helpful to have available on that part of it? Certainly. If, uh, if you're like an organization, they, they're like a slew of documents that the grant, that the grantee organization will ask for. Um, and they might ask for like a profit and loss, a budget versus actuals, very standard things for an organization. If you are say applying for like, like a film grant, your group of people applying for a film grant, they might ask for a, another different slew of documents that that is often really dependent on the granting organization. Um, like, you know, if it's like a government organization, they're going to ask for financial documents out the wazoo. If it's okay. a small private foundation, they might just ask for a budget and that's it. That's mm-hmm. another thing of, of knowing your audience. If you do not, if you do not feel like you have the financial literacy to like apply for really big organizations that ask for a lot of financial documents, then you just know not to apply for those things. Mm -hmm. When it comes to grants, is there usually a, we've given this to you and now you owe us something? I don't mean financially back. It's more just like, or is this just a gift ultimately? You know, that's like, here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, for yes, like it's it like it is it is not good if a if a granting organization is like we'll give you this money if you do this like ethically dubious thing. Normally, like w- getting the grant is usually stipulated with with the most is like if you get this grant, you better put our logo in your that. programs mm-hmm. um, or in your credits, like like stuff like that. That's usually the things that are required. Um, so you like you put their name and logo. You, you put their logo on, on something, you put them in your annual report, you credit them perhaps. 
Uh, but it is, in my experience, it is extremely rare that like a foundation will ask for any kind of, I don't know, even like a quid pro quo. That's just like not how these yeah. foundations operate. Yeah. Um, it like maybe it happens, but certainly not in my experience. Yeah. In your experience, what yeah. are some like, please don't do this, or these are the traps that people have fallen into as they're beginning? Please do not create programming because you think there's you could get money. This is something, a trap that I see companies and people do all the time. They're like, oh my gosh, there's this grant for $40,000. We need to make a project for it. Mm -hmm. That is the hugest trap that a lot of people go to, which is that they will just make up stuff to do because they want money. It is, it's never good for anybody. Um, it's a waste of time usually for the foundation and for like your staff, if you're part of organizations, like stop doing that. Um, but so that that's like an ethical thing, like stop doing that. Um, mm -hmm. in terms of like big no's, this is obvious, but should be said of just like, really try to write well, like try, try to make sense there. You'd be surprised at how many grants I've read in which the central question is not asked. And it's just, it, it's just like really difficult to read. Um, because somebody's trying to be like, to sound more higher than now because somebody doesn't grammatically check their verbiage, like yeah. because of what? Because it, a lot of it is grammar and a lot of organizations I think are going to be like more forgiving than you think about grammar, but it just has to be legible, readable um, mm -hmm. for, for people. Um, I think another big no, uh, another big no, no, when it comes to grants is talking about programs or different things you're doing and not have anything to back it up. So specifically, like, if you're talking about EDI, we have done such great work with EDI. We have increased diversity in the, the people we are casting and the people that we have. And then you provide no evidence for that. Mm -hmm. You don't give specific numbers. You don't give, like, you don't say, you don't have, like, an EDI statement for that. That's, like, a big no-no. You should never write anything that you were not prepared to back up with some kind of statistic or some kind of like formal commitment that you can write about. Mm -hmm. um, you should assume that, uh, th like this rarely happens, but you should assume that a foundation might ask you about it. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, so this is another thing. Don't lie. Don't lie <laughs> in your grants. Just don't do it. What if it is somebody who's just starting out, right? Like, let's say I just started a theater company. I don't have the financials to like back me up in terms of like all yeah. the things. It's like, I have the ideas and this is why we're starting this organization. And this is actually why we need this grant to start. Or, you know, yeah. I wrote a movie and it's my first movie ever. And I don't have experience yeah. necessarily with showing you all the feature films I've made before, but mm -hmm. this is exactly why I need your assistance grant. Yes. Is it, is that, is it helpful to put that as part of the narrative? I would imagine it is because that is arguably why you're reaching out for this. But in terms of leaning into the emotional storytelling, I guess that's yeah. the thing for me of trying to understand. And I kind of asked this earlier, but maybe this is a different way in is like yeah. as storytellers, which arguably right. so many of us are who are coming to this because we have stories that we want to share in whatever capacity, yes. how much of those stories are worth like how much of the lens for storytelling is there versus the like parameters yeah. i mean this is really cheesy but grant writing is storytelling you okay. are telling a story when you are grant writing. you are telling the story of like why you were doing your project why you have formed this organization why is it imp why it's important that you get funding for things and you should treat grant writing as if you are telling like the biography of your project of yourself of your organization um and that and and like you have to have that kind of investment in it. You can't you can't necessarily be removed from it. Like I, like it, I think it is okay to have like emotional investment in like what is be and and like what you're writing about. Certainly, if you are brand new at grant writing, if you don't have that experience, I actually I don't recommend that you say I've never written a grant before in that in that grant. Like that's. Mm -hmm. That's just like not really something that what it, mostly it's just like not relevant. Like granting organizations don't care if this is your first or your hundredth grant. They don't care about you, the grant writer necessarily. They care about what you are writing for. So mm -hmm. focus on like what you're writing for and show how invested you are in that project versus 
necessarily like about you even if you are the project such as like if this is like an individual grant but yeah. really write about the project itself and less about like who you are yeah is there anything that is on the yes include this this is always going to be successful <laughs> i mean st statistics and numbers like they love statistics and numbers if you have like this many people came to see your student matinees put that in mm -hmm. if you have numbers for anything try to find a way to put that in because that just helps contextualize anything that will help contextualize what you're writing about that is always worth doing um you know like this this film this film is going to hire like this many bipoc individuals put that in that is always something numbers are always worth having because like you just have to assume that the people you are who are going to read your grant know nothing about you and you have to give as much contextual information as possible and numbers is just like a very easy way to contextualize information um, um i think also like another uh, another great thing to do uh if you're grant writing is to prepare work samples uh, most or a lot of organizations particularly if you're in the arts you need to have work samples which is basically just like examples of previous work you've done or maybe examples of the project you're currently doing if you're doing a film maybe they might ask for like a pitch deck or something mm -hmm. you have to put those things in order because again the people who you're writing this grant for they're not going to know anything about you they're not going to know anything about your project so you have to really illustrate what the project is mm -hmm. um and especially um whatever work samples you prepare and that could be like for example, if you're an individual artist asking for an individual grant, it could be video of you performing in a show or maybe even an audition monologue. If you are an organization, it could be footage from a past show or perhaps like, you know, a, a trailer from a show. Mm -hmm. or if you're doing a film, maybe it's like some test footage you have or a pitch deck, but you should have other supplemental materials available to add into your grant. Almost every single grant will ask for any supplemental materials. And it is always good. You should always have supplemental materials to share. Would you recommend people, obviously they'll specify it, but something that is potentially more on a visual capacity than just a written capacity? Obviously, if somebody's you yeah. know trying to get a grant for a writing situation, then like that's maybe not necessarily going to have a visual component for it. But have you found that having the visuals is a helpful shift or inclusion if possible. Absolutely. Vid video is always best. People always want to watch a video. Um, people, people, you know, will read a brochure, fine, they'll read a flyer, but like, for whatever reason, like people always love a video. So if you have anything that's a video, that is always super helpful. Mm -hmm. If I haven't organized all my stuff and my ducks are not in a row, <laughs> but I see <laughs> there's a grant that is mm -hmm. flying by and I really want to go for it. Yeah. Do you recommend you try with things not maybe being as organized or do you recommend you let that year cycle go by or that opportunity cycle go by until you have your ducks in a row to actually apply for it? Does it, As in the question is, is like, does it matter yeah. if you've applied to a thing multiple times? Do they care? If it's an organization you've never applied to before, I think it's like fine to just apply, see what happens, and then try for the next cycle. Because often organizations and foundations, they will go back to previous grants that you've written. Maybe they will see how you've improved. So it, if you feel like you're not ready, but maybe you can improve the next time, or maybe the language is at least good enough to like get on their radar, that's totally fine. It, it's very rare that like they're going to penalize you for like a bad grant the next time you apply, especially if that grant is going to be better. If for some reason this is an institution you've applied to before, you have if you've applied to before and you've gotten money and you're like, we're totally not ready. If you've gotten money from them, you still need to apply like it like you have to do that. But if you haven't gotten money from them. Um, it is something that is worth considering, but I say that like, it is far better to apply and then just be prepared for a no than to not apply. But what if you're applying, I, I guess the question then becomes, is it okay to apply with the exact same project, right? Like, let's say, you know, as an individual, I, again, you know, let's just go for, 
I, I wrote, I, I want to apply to this screenwriting, you know, grant. And I want this particular screenplay to be the thing that I'm trying to get made. And yeah. they didn't take me the first time. But I'm going to reapply yeah. with this exact screenplay. So arguably nothing within, maybe I've edited it a little bit in terms of the project itself. And maybe I have maybe a more clear outline of my budget or the way in which I hope to use the money. But ultimately, the actual project is exactly yeah. the same. It won't look bad if yeah. I'm like, oh, I still haven't made this in this year since I've applied. So, so this is a great question because it actually is very standard in foundations that you will apply for the same program over and over and over again and you might get rejected year after year after year cool. and then maybe the fifth year you apply the fifth cycle you apply they'll be like all right we'll, we'll give them the money okay. for something like a, a screenplay that you're like you were trying to be on the deadline you should be like very you should be very specific about that uh, if it's if you were trying to apply for something that has like a bit of a tight timeline anytime you apply for it your application needs to be better and better and better than the last time. And that goes for like anything you do. However, um, you're not really going to be penalized for applying for the same thing unless like, unless you specifically reach out to that foundation and be like, Hey, can you give me feedback? This is something I should have mentioned before, but often foundations will give you feedback on your ask. proposal if you are rejected. So it, so that is something you should do anytime that window is available, especially if you're new to this, you should always ask foundations for feedback on your proposals, because maybe you have a very well written proposal, but it turns out the thing you want funding for is just not something that they're interested in. They were actually more interested in this other thing you kind of wrote about, and that should have been the star thing in the proposal. So is it okay to ask, like if they haven't given it to you freely and they send out a general email that's just like, hey, we've had, you know, multiple applications, we were only able to give out X amount of them, unfortunately you yeah. weren't chosen. Is that a thing like the protocol is you can be like, hey, friend, yeah. thank you so much. So grateful. Can you give me a, like, how? Tell me why. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most foundations will will very encourage that, in fact, because like a lot of foundations, a lot of organizations, they do want to give money. They do want to let these people they do want to let artists know like what they can do to be seen right. as like better candidates um, for certainly for like larger government organizations. There's usually like there's usually like a listed procedure of how you get feedback, but mm -hmm. even for small granting organizations, you should always ask feedback. Even if you got the award, you should ask feedback so that you know like how to improve your grant for next time. Because if you get a grant for one thing, maybe the next year you can get it for more money. Yeah. Well, that was my, my, my other question is, and I guess it would depend on how they've outlined, you know, within like the requirements of it. But yeah. how many grants somebody's allowed to ask for at once or kind of like, obviously, you need to spread yeah. your net really wide because ultimately you may not get any, let alone once, but maybe you might get 10 out of the 100. I mean, what how the numbers game in it? How does one play yeah. that? Yeah, that really depends on the granting institution. Like, for example, the DC Commission for the Arts and Humanities, um, you can apply for like one individual artist grant but if you apply for an individual artist grant you probably can't apply for like an education grant okay um if if you are an organization you can apply for the project events and festivals grants but then you can't apply for like the school field trips grants or, or something like that so that that goes back to like just reading the rules of the organization it is extremely rare that a foundation will let you apply to every grant that they have yeah. There are usually so many organizations that they will usually request that you apply maybe to one or two of them. And so that's where you have to really make a decision on like, what is your best chance? What about not just within one specific organization? What if it's like, cool, I want to apply to 20 different organizations that all offer a version of something that would support what I do? What is the numbers yeah. game in that? The number, So the numbers game is Grant. Grant is like, it is a numbers game and it's a long game. Like often, if you apply for a grant, you should you should be prepared to not even see that you see that money for like a year, mm -hmm. um, because that's that's like a, a big dichotomy between individual giving, which can be very quick, very immediate, go on one of your timetable, and then grants, which have very specific rules that they need to adhere to, and so that's why it takes a long time. So that's why, like a lot of organizations, if they have like a project they want to fund, they will usually apply to like multiple different yeah. foundations 
um, and they will slightly adjust their budgets for other foundations. They will slightly adjust their narratives mm -hmm. um, because they're hoping if not 20 organizations, 20 organizations are not going to fund your thing, but right. maybe one will. Right. Um, so you de it's definitely worth casting. It's casting the net wide, but the net that you cast has to really be in the parameters of whatever you're trying to fund. You shouldn't mm -hmm. just try to like go for funding that might be tangentially related to what you're doing. That's just like a waste of time. You should always really try to find the specific things that um, a granting organization might give, but cast the net wide. So it's, it's okay to be like, I'm applying to so many of them and it's possible yeah. you might get a lot and it's possible you might not get, you might not get anything. Foundations love actually, if you're applying to a lot of organizations, again, they do not want to necessarily be the sole reason why you right. can or cannot do a project. It is good. It is actively. And uh, oftentimes, organizations, especially big foundations, they will ask, what other institutions are you applying to? That gives them a lot of context for how much you've researched into yeah. this and how deeply you care about it, that you're not just asking the first name you saw on Google. You're asking 15 different uh, foundations because that's how much you care about the project. It's, yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. How much do I need to hire a grant writer is really like the thing, yeah. right? Like, can I trust my own skill set? Is it more of a like, oh, there's a person here who has a really great writing background and I put them on it. Is it like, uh, you know, I just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust it this year. And if nothing happens then next year, because I really want this, I hire, like, at what point do I yeah. need to consider hiring externally? If at all. If I, at all. I say, yeah, I, I think it is always a good idea. Even if you if you feel really confident in your writing skills, if you really feel really confident, you know how grants work, then like, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely go for it. But if you even contracting a grant writer on just like an hourly rate for like a couple of grants, that will just give you somebody who like knows the language mm -hmm. of grants and knows the parameter of grants because it is a form of storytelling. It's a very specific form of storytelling um, and a, a unique skill set mm -hmm. um, and a unique way of reading things. So I think it is always good even if you're confident, like, I could totally write this grant. You probably can write this grant, but even just, like, having a grant writer present for, like, three hours, mm -hmm. maybe even just to go through your work with you and just be like, is this the language that they're looking for? Are these the documents that they're looking for? That's just going to put you way, way ahead. When I was a panelist for a grant uh, for different theater organizations, I could tell what organizations were using the grant writing firm that I worked for mm -hmm. because they had very clear, very clear narratives. They had very clear documents. They had things in, in an order. Um, and you can definitely tell what are the grants that are being written with grant writing in mind versus people who are just like, I'm just going to do my best of just saying why I want the money. So I, I think always try to at least get advisement from a grant writer, okay. even if you can't afford having one. Yeah. Where do people find grant writers? <laughs> <laughs> so there are actually like quite a few Facebook groups right now where you can find uh, grant writers and other people in development who are willing to be contracted out and even volunteer um, because, you know, a lot of a lot of us, particularly in the performing arts space who are in development, a lot of us used to be or still are artists mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. like really care about the well-being of the performing arts. And a lot of people are willing to talk to uh, talk to others. There are a lot of uh, places that give free workshops, online seminars for grant writing that are super super helpful. Do you know any of those offhand? Well, Elevate Elevate is the organization that I used to the grant writing firm used to work for, and they still do very consistent seminars and workshops for people who can't afford a grant writer but who need grant writing skills. So that's based in DC. I still recommend them. Like I haven't worked with them in years, but I still recommend them because they know the business and they know how to do that. Um, so that's like a great place to go. You'd be surprised that you just go how through social media. If I were to like search on Facebook grant writers, like Facebook groups will come up for me. Hundred percent. Like grant writers of what area? DC DC area grant writers. That's a Facebook group. Development professionals. DC area. That's a Facebook group. Okay. Um, yeah. Everyone really wants to help. So it, it's quite easy. Yeah. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should know? If you are an individual artist or like a group of artists 
we're going to apply for a grant, you should really think about uh, start crafting like an individual artist statement or like a group of artist statement. Is this different than a mission statement? Well, organizations have a mission statement. Like, if I was to have a mission statement, but if you're not necessarily part of an organization, then you should have something akin to a mission statement that you can always refer to. To me, my philosophy as a grant writer is that everything you write in your grant should be able to go back to your mission statement on why it's important to put in the grant. And so if you are an individual person or a group of people trying to write a grant, everything you write should really go back to that mission statement that you have. Because that is going to help guide you on why you are writing what you're writing and will just help foundations just get a sense of like what your values are. And that's always going to be helpful. Beautiful. So like a personal mission statement, have that in your back yeah. pocket. And again, like versions of like the 100, the 250, the like 500. Yeah. Is there anything else that I didn't ask you that I should have asked? Grades are really tricky. It's not standardized. Every foundation will have something different. It is totally normal to feel a little confused and overwhelmed with the different parameters. And that's why a lot of people in development and grant writing, there are these large networks of people who are like willing to just sit down and chat and just help. Yeah. Even just for a moment. Thank you for breaking all of that down. I know we didn't get into like the, you know, like the specifics, because obviously the specifics would depend depending on the project, depending on the organization, depending on the ask, depending on the money, the amount, like all of these things I know yeah. are, that would change the specificity in the way in which we do. But I think breaking it down of like what we can start to prepare on the back end, perhaps the things that might come down the pipeline if and how we're looking for these opportunities, um, you know, if one is going to be doing this kind of reach out for a long period of time, the expectations yeah. around it, I think all of that has been set. So I really appreciate you sharing in that way. For anybody who wants to reach out, who wants to work with you, who wants to learn more about what you do, who wants to like hire I mean all of those things what within your boundaries is the best way for people to reach out of course you can feel free to email me at ariabelzergmail.com um, you can also just press me on Instagram too I my Instagram is also Aria Bells and I also answer questions there happy to help in whatever I do um, I, I do freelance grant writing and I also read over people's documents permission statements etc uh, so if, if you just want someone to go over a document I'm happy to do that too amazing um, thank you so much for being in the space. Mm -hmm.